The next topic that we're going to cover is exponents. Exponents are going to be superscript numbers that are written after a number that tell us to multiply that number by itself the number of times of the exponent. So for example, 2 raised to the third power is going to be the same as 2 times 2 times 2 or 2 times itself 3 times. Now there are a number of rules that govern how we manipulate exponents and these are going to come in handy when we're dealing with numbers that are too large to calculate on test day. So for example, the first bullet point tells us that a to the b times a to the c is going to be equal to a to the b plus c. What this means is that when you have two numbers with the same base and you're multiplying them, you can keep the base the same and add the two exponents in order to simplify the expression. The next example tells us that when you're dividing two numbers that contain exponents, you keep the base the same and then subtract your two exponents in order to simplify. Our third example, a to the b raised to the c power, is for examples in which we have a number raised to a power and then that entire quantity is raised to another power. In that situation, you're going to take the same base and multiply your two exponents in order to simplify. Next, when you see a negative exponent, the way to convert that expression is to take 1 over the same base and raise it to the positive exponent. So for example, a to the negative b power is going to be equal to 1 over a to the b. Now there's a couple of other things that you need to keep in mind when you're dealing with exponents. If you're doing a fraction and raising that fraction to a positive exponent greater than 1, you're actually going to get a smaller value. The higher the exponent, the smaller the result. So for example, 1 half squared is actually going to give you 1 fourth, smaller than the fraction that we started with. Also, you need to keep in mind that negative numbers are going to give negative and positive results depending on the property of the exponent. So for example, when a negative number is raised to an even exponent, the result is going to be positive because all of those negative signs are going to cancel out when being multiplied by each other. When a negative number is raised to an odd exponent, however, the result is going to be negative. Let's try an example. Simplify the expression x to the negative 2 times y to the 3 times x to the 4 divided by x to the sixth times y to the second power. First thing we want to do in a situation like this is combine like terms in the numerator and the denominator. In our numerator, we have two terms that contain the same base, x. And when we multiply two quantities with the same base, we add our exponents in order to simplify. So x to the negative 2 times x to the fourth is going to equal x squared. That's the only like terms in the numerator and there are no like terms that need to be combined in the denominator. So our simplified expression so far is x squared times y to the third over x to the sixth times y squared. Now we can combine like terms over the fraction bars and in order to do that we want to subtract our exponents. Our base stays the same so x squared divided by x to the sixth is going to be x to the negative fourth power because 2 minus 6 equals negative 4. Similarly, y to the third power over y squared is going to be equal to y to the first power because 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. Finally, we can reduce to lowest terms. Because we have a negative exponent, we can reduce to y over x to the fourth power. Now let's go through a few exponent exercises. Take a few moments to go through the following exercises and when you're finished, we'll check your answers and then walk through a few of these examples together.
Okay, stop working. Go ahead and check your answers. We're going to start by reviewing question number seven. Question number seven gives us the example two squared, that entire quantity raised to the fourth power. Again, we're going to want to apply our exponent rule in order to simplify this expression. In this particular case, we're going to multiply our exponents. So our base remains the same, two raised to the eighth power because two times four is equal to eight. Now let's take a look at number nine. Number nine gives us the expression five to the third times five to the negative fourth. The operation here is multiplication, which means that we're going to add our exponents. Our base stays the same, so five to the third times five to the negative fourth is going to be equal to five to the negative first power, because three plus negative four is equal to negative one. Now we can further simplify that because we have a negative exponent. Five to the first power is going to be the same as one over five to the first power, which is just one fifth. Finally, let's take a look at example 10. This expression asks us to simplify two to the seventh power divided by two to the third power. Because we're dividing, we're going to subtract our exponents, leaving us with two to the fourth power because seven minus three is equal to four. Now that we've tried a few exercises, let's go through a test question together. Number 11 says, if x is equal to two, then three to the x plus x to the third power squared is equal to what? In this example, because we know that x is equal to two, we can plug in two for x in that expression, giving us the expression three squared plus two to the third power squared. Now, because these numbers are relatively small, we can go ahead and evaluate each piece. Three squared is going to be three times three, which is nine. Two to the third power is going to be two times two times two, which is eight. And then we need to take that result and square it, leaving us with nine plus 64. Our final step is to just complete the sum. Nine plus 64 is equal to 73, which gives us answer choice E.